What is up everybody? Jimmy from RT Clinic. Today I have a special request from Sue Salisbury 6847 in my comments that asked specifically, how do you clean your nebulizer? And this is a really important thing that everybody needs to know. So let's get to it. Let's go. So a real common question that I get in the comments from either clinicians or patients is how to clean your nebulizer because we know that you're going to be breathing through this, obviously the mouthpiece, the T-piece, the nebulizer piece, and then the extension tubing if you have it. You may not have extension tubing, but this needs to be cleaned. There's a, two different ways to clean it, and there should be a daily clean that you do after every use. Um, actually after your use of the day, maybe say you're doing three during the day, at the end of the day, you would clean it with a mild detergent. You're gonna, you're gonna soak it in a mild detergent. You're gonna clean it. You're gonna let it shake off any excess, and then you're gonna let it air dry. That's the key, mild detergent daily, uh, just as you clean anything else. Don't dishwasher this thing or anything like that, but you're gonna use a mild detergent. That's one. But I think the most important one we need to go into today is how to do a disinfectant on it or disinfection on it when we do this. You can do this weekly, or if you're sick and you're taking nebulizers, you're gonna be breathing through this. Everything you inhale and exhale, you're gonna have probably particles, maybe even virus or bacteria particles that are gonna be coming out going through this nebulizer. And you don't wanna pick it up the next day or the next time you use it and then worry about inhaling what you um, exhaled into it the day before. So a couple real key pieces that I have for disinfecting it. Let's go over here to the table and I'm gonna show you a little bit of some tricks and tips to disinfecting your nebulizer and other respiratory devices. And I'm gonna show some of those also. So specifically for disinfection, you're gonna need a couple different things. You're gonna need some type of container. If it's a graduated container or if it's just a Tupperware bowl or something like that, but you need to measure out how much vinegar you're going to put in. And so this is white vinegar, distilled white vinegar. Inside uh, your container is going to be distilled water and you're going to do a three to one part solution. So in other words, three cups of distilled water and then one cup of uh, vinegar solution. This is going to be your disinfectant. You're going to want to put your nebulizer pieces inside of this and let them soak for 30 minutes and then air dry. So I'm going to add this white vinegar and there that makes it a three to one so three cups to one cup this is a little bit less than that but I'm just doing it for demonstration purposes now I have my nebulizer here and as you can see I might have um, some excess medication in that make sure you get the excess medication out so you want to get rid of your excess medication and then have an empty nebulizer you're gonna have this piece to the nebulizer, which is the top. So let's take all these pieces apart. So the corrugated tubing, the T piece, the mouthpiece, and the nebulizer. So one real key is don't sterilize or sterilize, don't disinfect your tubing. Uh, you can simply wipe it down, but remember the tubing's just delivering air to your, to your machine. So I would take these pieces all apart and lay them out so that they don't have any excess water. And now we're gonna to get to where we're going to initially clean them. You can do a, a, a quick uh, rinse of them if you'd like, and then you're gonna put them inside this solution. Remember, we're gonna spare the tubing. We're not gonna use that in this case. So I'm gonna place these different items in here. Wow, there we go and you'll want to submerge them. If you have a small cylinder, you can kind of bend this tubing and kind of push it down. And then these items will remain in this for 30 minutes. So set a timer, let them soak in this. This is gonna kill anything that you might have exhaled into it, okay? A couple different things while that's soaking for 30 minutes. I wanna talk a little bit about the nebulizer. So you may have one that's similar to this. Um, they almost all, they all plug in in some, in some fashion. If you look all over this nebulizer, I'm looking for a filter because this is actually gonna pull in air 
the little compressor inside pulls in air, compresses it, and it comes out this tube here. In this case, in this drive unit, the, the filter is right here. This filter doesn't need to be changed weekly. It very possibly just monthly. But if you're having any type, like your nebulizer is running longer than usual, or it has a different sound to it because you kind of know the sound, you'll need to take that filter off. So in this case, the filters in this piece right here, sometimes it's located in the back and a lot of these come with an extra one. So I just get a, some kind of tool to take that out and you can see this is very simply just a little piece of a sponge. And this one came with five extras that you can use. These aren't cleaned. You use these and you throw them away. You can also get pieces of foam or whatever it would take. But what this does, you replace that with a new one, you're gonna push that in, and that's gonna make sure that you're not pulling any type of dirty air. If you've got a lot of dust in your area or, or pets or things like that, you're not pulling that back into the machine. Also inside of this, it's just like a, a little motor compressor. And so you wanna make sure you keep this air, these area clean. If you have some uh, can of air, you can spray that out a little bit on the outside if it's starting to, to run or get extra hot but replacing that filter, sometimes the filters on the back, is something really good to do once a month. Some other things that you might really wanna think about disinfecting, if you use inhalers at home, I've got two different spacers here. And so if you think about this, your medication is gonna go into this, it's gonna hold while you, you're gonna actuate your MDI, it's gonna hold and you're gonna take that slow breath on it. Well, it's really important because you're gonna be putting your mouth on this each time. So at least weekly, if I'm using one of these also, I would also do the same thing if you have a little bit more of, of space in there or once you're finished, then you can soak. Mainly you're looking at soaking the end because you don't, you're not really blowing into this as much. And a lot of them, as you can see with this one, it actually has a one-way valve inside of it to keep you from blowing in. But you wanna disinfect this outside. You can do that with this solution by wiping it or you can also put it inside of there. You're not going to hurt these. These are plastic. Um, but the key is it's going to be a little tough when you get to the end of these is getting them to air dry. So in this case, this back piece comes off of this one and that's going to be a lot easier for it to air dry. In the case of the pocket chamber, it might be a little bit more difficult to get this piece off. A lot of times it is, let's see, there we go, it came right off. That piece comes off like that, and then this, both of these can be uh, soaked in that vinegar solution for 30 minutes. And then you get those back together after they air dry, and then that will be important. Also, if you've got a kid and you're using one of these masks, this is gonna go on their face, they're gonna inhale and exhale all through this. Something else good once a week to disinfect with a three, uh, three parts distilled water to one part um, of the distilled white vinegar and let that soak also. That's going to clean these things. And another device that you're going to see that you might have at your house is an FSIM spirometer. You're also going to be putting your mouth on this and maybe it's been while you're sick. So once a week you'll want to disinfect this also. You won't want to disinfect this because remember you're taking your breath in. You're not blowing into it. So you actually just take this piece off. Take the mouthpiece off and then take these two and you could soak these also in that, in that solution of three parts distilled water to three parts distilled white vinegar. That would also be a 30 minute soak for those to fully disinfect them. And then you would let these air dry. So our 30 minutes is up. You can go inside and get your different devices. You'll wanna tap them to get almost all the moisture out of them that you can. They may smell a little bit like vinegar. And then you're gonna once you get this out, you're going to lay them on a clean cloth or a clean paper towel in an area for them to air dry. Because if they don't air dry, it will get a little sticky and it also can um, cause your nebulizer not to run quite as well. So dry these as much as you can and then let them air dry. There's the top of our nebulizer. This is an interesting one because this, this piece right here which is uh, a part of the baffle is actually attached, which is nice. Sometimes those will be disattached and they will look like a little blue cone that sits inside the medicine cup. So you may have it inside the medicine cup, uh, a little blue cone that can come out, it's removable. Just make sure that you get that dried 
because that's really important to the nebulization because what happens is, is actually that air comes through here, it goes up and it takes that medication and uses it as, and this baffle actually splatters it and breaks it into those little particles. So if this gets sticky at all or is not put in there correctly, this isn't gonna run. So tap off the excess, you know, let them sit out on a, a clean, dry paper towel or clean, clean dry, dry cloth in an area where they can air dry. With the vinegar solution, it will actually air dry a little faster and keep them from getting gummed up at all. So after they have air dried, then you'll want to put it back together. Remember what I said in the beginning, you're going to not do much with your tubing at all. The tubing actually can just be wiped down with uh, maybe a Clorox wipe or something along those lines. You don't want to get too fancy because this is kind of soft and you don't want to wear this out too much, although it will last for a long period of time. So we're going to say we've waited maybe four to six hours or so for this to air dry and these are air dried. We're just going to reassemble them. This goes back into here. You can tell it's not dry, but for purposes of the video, I'm going to show it. T piece goes on here. The great thing about this is, um, you, you can put it on wrong, but when we say T piece, just think of the T being on top of the nebulizer. Okay. And then when you go to the mouthpiece, probably the most important aspect to, to, uh, disinfect that only goes in one side. This is the same size. I won't fit. It only goes in one size side. And then this corrugated tubing, which might take a little bit longer to air dry just because of all the grooves goes on right here. You then take your cleaned tubing, plug it in, push it. And then you're actually going to connect this here. And then your nebulizer should be ready to run. Right now it's not nebulizing anything because I have nothing in it. But as you can see, it's actually going uh, and pushing air through it, waiting for medication to go in. A couple different ways you can add your medication through the top here, or you can take this off and put your medication in there to use. These will want to be completely dry when you do use them, so you won't want to use them if they're wet at all. Let them air dry a little bit longer. But those are really important keys to disinfecting your nebulizer and other devices, including your spacer, uh, your incentive spirometer mouthpiece and those type of things um, Sparing the tubing so make sure you spare the tubing. We don't need to so we don't need to put that in one problem is if you do stick this down in there and you get fluid inside this tubing It will then push that fluid up into this hole right here Which will really mess your nebulizer up. So it's gonna take a while to get all that extra extra fluid outside of this tube so do not do not soak or submerge your your uh, oxygen tubing. You just want to mainly do your nebulizer. I hope that was helpful for you today. That three to one part, so we're doing three cups of distilled water, one cup of vinegar. You're going to do that at least once a week, but if you're sick, you want to do it every couple days. You cannot overdo it with this. These, this plastic is not going to break down. You should get a new nebulizer every couple months, really, especially if it starts not nebulizing well or making different sounds, that'll be a time to replace it. But using this method of soaking it in that solution is going to help it to last much longer. Uh, and it's going to keep you healthy so you're not rebreathing whatever you've exhaled into it. I hope this was helpful today. Make sure to comment below if it was or send it to somebody who might need to see this video. Uh, very simple things that you can do, but we got to make sure these nebulizers are working appropriately so you can get the medication that you've been prescribed. Also, look below. I've got some merchandise if you're interested in that. I'm also selling some badge tags. They're part of my Etsy store. If you want to purchase some of those, those are purchased individually or in twos. You can give those to a healthcare worker that you know. There's also references in those badge tags about uh, oxygenation, ventilation formulas that we use commonly in the respiratory therapy world or critical care world. And then there's also a spiritual reference that I put in there that has a couple different um, spiritual references in the Lord's Prayer on one side and then a psalm on the other side, which is going to give you a little bit of hope and comfort. Maybe just not so you're referencing all the numbers, but that, so that you're referencing something that's sustainable. And we know we like to reference the great healer. And so that's what we that's who we're going to reach out to uh, if you're in these times. And I encourage you to do that also. 
um, the Lord heals every time. And so keep praying for that if you're, if you're sick at all in any way. And uh, if you want to reach out to me at all, if you have any questions, I'm always happy to help you with that. Jimmy from the RT Clinic, like, subscribe. I'll see you next time. to me.